Hollywood. That's gooey bally hooly Hollywood. Where any office boy or young mechanic can be a panic. With just a good looking pan. Food, wine, and film have found a home here at the third annual Napa Valley Film Festival. It's the best of both worlds. I mean, you know, I think everybody loves to see a good film, and um, it's great to be around filmmakers and the creative spirits, you know, that are here. And pairing that with food and wine is, it's, uh, I think heaven probably looks something a little bit like this. <laughs> or a little bit like you. <laughs> They hire fellas whose physiques are good. I love the Napa Valley. My wife and I come up here often, so we're very familiar with it. And, you know, any excuse to, uh, to come is fantastic. Winemakers and movie moguls mingled as the silver screen took center stage in the Napa Valley. Hollywood heavyweights like Colin Farrell and John Lee Hancock headed to wine country for the screening of their heartwarming family film, Saving Mr. Banks. People seem to like the film and that's a, that's a lovely thing. It's lovely to be part of that. It's lovely to be part of something that seems to inspire some kind of level of emotional release. The reaction so far has been really great and people find different things to like in the movie, which is wonderful. Um, but for me, it's just, you know, your script isn't finished. Your script of your life isn't finished and it can change and you never know what's coming. And how uh, challenging or fun is it to deal with a real character like Tom Hanks portraying Walt Disney? I mean, that, that's got to be it. It's terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. We went to Tom to play Walt. I thought, what happens if he says no? I don't. I don't know what else I'm going to do. I just felt like that Tom had to be, you know, had to be the, had to be Walt. Oh, I got to say, I left that feeling, uh, the movie, wanting to go to Disneyland with all those Mickey Mouse's everywhere. Then Disney will be very happy yeah. if that's the result. <laughs> that's uh -huh. what happened when I saw it. I'm an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> While well, homegrown flicks were also a hit. Wine films on tap included Dossier Zinfandel, which traces the history of Zin. This film was about uh, Croatia's claim to the, the origin of, of Zinfandel. Who's right? Yes. <laughs> and Red Obsession, a documentary about China's fixation on Bordeaux, narrated by Russell Crowe. The first vines were planted here by the Romans over 2,000 years ago. It seems like yesterday I spoke with you. Yeah, Monique, it's almost a year. You know, Berlin Film Festival was February and suddenly we're at the end of the year. And now Red Obsession really is an obsession because people are talking about it all over the world. Well, it's, it's not just the film, it's the wine, of course, as well. You know, we're talking about uh, climate change. We're talking about uh, there used to be a wine glut. That's gone. Now we're talking about there's not enough wine in the world to, to, to service everybody's needs. As we discovered in China, one of our interviewees says pretty soon the entire world's production will not be enough to satisfy the Chinese demands. What's the goal when people watch the film? What do you hope they take away from her? What's the sort of call to action, if you will? It's a bit of a cliche, but it's absolutely true that, that wine has the ability to bring not just people together, but to bring cultures together as well. And, and you feel that really strongly when you're in China. They have such incredible respect for the winemakers. I found that despite the, the, the cultural differences, language differences, that wine kind of breaks that down. That, that's, I found that, re, that really kind of rewarding in terms of making the film. But the hottest ticket in town was less about the red carpet and more about the red wine. What's a girl got to do to get some Petrus around here? Uh, just ask. Basically all you have to do. Petrus me, please. Okay. We are toasting Tinseltown tonight as Benchmark Wine Group officially gets the Napa Valley Film Festival party started. We specialize in wines from all over the world, back vintages, current vintages. But, um, for example, tonight we're pouring Petrus, Margot, we have a vertical from the the 70s and 80s of Opus One. If someone's never tried sort of an older wine, would you do you have any advice or tips? Is there an acquired taste to maybe tasting a 66 Margot? You definitely just have to have patience. So sometimes you've just got to pour it and let it breathe and let it sit. Just take your time. That's that's the biggest lesson. With over 300 filmmakers, 150 world-class wines, and 50 top chefs, the past five days here at the Napa Valley Film Festival read like a Hollywood script, complete with a fairy tale ending. For Wino TV, I'm Monique Sultani. Hooray, Monique.